Located at the easterly extreme of the region of Murcia's coastline, the Calblanque, Monte de las Tenizas, and Peña del Aguila Regional Park is one of the most emblematic protected natural areas within our community. It is composed of an extraordinary coastal landscape of steep slopes, beautiful beaches, coves and inaccessible cliffs, surrounded by mountain forests and brush, and extending from Cala Riona, near Cabo de Palos, to Monte de las Tenizas and Peña del Aguila, near Port Manbay. There are several small towns within the park's boundaries, such as Cobaticas and La Jordana. Lying on the outskirts of the park, there are numerous villages and residential estates that make up a highly humanized landscape, which is notable for the unique Mar Menor, the salty lagoon covered by different protective measures. Calblanque has always been an area of great interest to human populations, and as such, its natural resources have been harnessed since ancient times. The presence of prehistoric settlers is evidenced in various caves and archaeological sites, such as can be found in Cala de los Dentoles, which contains significant deposits of shells, the remains of different sea and land mollusks that were consumed by our ancestors from the Neolithic period. Items such as harpoons and pottery have been found in Cueva de los Mejiones. Some of these remains are on exhibition in the Cartagena Municipal Archaeological Museum. The Romans also occupied this area, leaving behind an important legacy of historical remains, including the Portman Road, composed of almost three kilometers of cobblestones and which rises from the bay next to the Moro Ravine. Although mining has been a traditional activity in the mountains of Cartagena since ancient times, it was the Romans who exploited the area with the greatest intensity, such as zinc, lead and silver. Mining was resumed in the 19th century, becoming a powerful motor for the economic development for the area, peppering the mountains with the winding towers, kilns, pit heads and wells that are now so characteristic of the landscape. In the 20th century, the depletion of old fields led to the introduction of open-cast mining. This new method of extraction was responsible for a much more significant environmental impact as large volumes of land were moved and ore washing equipment was installed, with huge amounts of sterile materials being dumped into Mar Menor and Port Manbay. Today we can still see how this great natural harbour which the Roman called Portus Magnus, is silted with the remains left behind by mining activities. The mining activities ceased completely towards the end of the last century, and today the scars left on the landscape are slowly being absorbed by vegetation. Now abandoned, there were previously salt works inside the park, the Razal salt works are located in a gently sloping area near the Mediterranean Sea, from which they are separated by large fossil dunes of extraordinary geomorphological interest. The salt works entered operation at the beginning of the 20th century and were originally located in two small lakes which were transformed to obtain salt. Initially, Inicialmente, el agua del mar se llevaba a los estanques an mediante una noria movida por tracción animal, noria lo que se conoce como noria de sangre. Wheel. Posteriormente, se utilizaron bombas movidas pumps. por un motor. Salt is extracted by circulating seawater through numerous large, shallow pools. As water passes from one pool to another, evaporation occurs and the salt concentration increases until it precipitates. The arid climate and strong sunlight contribute greatly to speeding up the process. Today, the Razal salt works' greatest interest lies in its environmental characteristics, as it constitutes an important wetland with a high degree of biodiversity, with its inhabitants including the Spanish tooth carp, a small fish that is found on the endangered species list. 
The salt works form part both of the park's environmental reserve and of the Mar Menor Special Protection Area. Agriculture and cattle farming were also among the main economic activities formerly carried out in the park. As such, another of the unique elements that can be observed in the Calblanque landscapes takes the form of numerous rural buildings known as casas cubicas, cubic houses. Scattered all over the countryside, these simple houses were once inhabited by farmers, cattle breeders, sailors, miners and workers from the salt works and bear witness to the once significant human presence in the area. Some of the houses have been restored, maintaining their traditional style. Calblanque offers many attractions to visitors, which can be enjoyed by following the different routes that have been created within the park. One of the sections of the GR92 Mediterranean path starts from Cala Reona and heads in the direction of Cala de los Dentoles, winding between hillsides and gullies formed by metamorphic materials in typically dark and bright colors. The entire route provides splendid views of the Mediterranean and the cliffs. Another of the sections of the GR92 runs along the Razal Saltworks and is an ideal route from which to observe the wetlands flora and fauna. It also enables the visitor to discover other environmental characteristics in the nearby area, such as Calblanque Beach, fragile mobile dunes and fossil dunes. Starting from the town of Cobaticas, visitors can follow the short distance route known as Circular al Cabezo de la Fuente, Cabezo de la Fuente Loop. Following the route allows us to observe the extraordinary coastal vegetation as well as Mediterranean scrub, dominated by palmettos and silk vine, which cover the steep slopes of the imposing Cabezo de la Fuente peak, before finally reaching the Parreno, Negrete and Playa Larga beaches. Another short distance path leads us to the peak of Monte de las Cenizas, one of the most spectacular coastal viewpoints in the region of Murcia. The scenic beauty is accompanied by the area's immense botanical interest, and a former military complex composed of artillery batteries, the highlights of which include the spectacular arched entrance adorned with motifs that evoke Mayan culture and the two enormous guns installed at the mountain's peak. The park is equipped with various facilities that both regulate and facilitate access for visitors. The Las Cobaticas Visitor Center provides an efficient visitor service, offering all the help necessary and a wide range of information about fauna, flora, landscapes, routes and other matters related to the park. Other facilities include car parks and wildlife observatories, which are accessed by means of an extensive network of roads and signposted forest tracks. The Calblanque, Monte de las Tanitas and Peña del Aguila Regional Park is a striking example of preservation of the Murthian coastline, full of natural charms and hosting ecosystems of extraordinary importance that include singular examples of flora and fauna of immense ecological interest. All these factors combine to make this unique landscape one of the most emblematic and representative natural spaces within the region of Murcia. Flora. The Cal Blanque, Monte de las Tanitas and Peña del Aguila Regional Park can be considered an exceptional natural space. More than 650 different plant species are preserved within its limits, including unique species which are highly representative of the southeast Iberian coastal environments. The park is host to plants which are characteristic of the region's semi-arid climate, many of which originated in North Africa and represent the only populations of their kind on the European continent. Broadly speaking, the highlights of the main types of vegetation to be found in the park include Aleppo pine forests, thickets which dominate much of the area, the vegetation found in the numerous ravines, salt marshes which occupy the depressions found in the saline soils near the coast, and coastal vegetation present in cliffs and beaches. 
Kalblunkis forests are distributed over wide areas of the park, mainly on north-facing slopes, which present the necessary humidity for tree growth. As in the majority of Iberian Mediterranean ranges, the dominant species is the Aleppo pine, which is characterized by its high resistance to adverse weather conditions. However, the Kalblunki forests also host other tree species of great interest. It is surprising that we should find palm oak in the region. In the shade of Cabezo del Orno, there is a small population of this species, plant relics that point to a wetter climate in the past. The area also has examples of plants which are characteristic of shaded environments, such as sarsaparilla and honeysuckle. We can even find some examples of heather and arbutus, further indicators of the overall rarity of these forests. In the clearings in the pine forests, we can find various species of orchids, plants with beautiful small flowers that often go unnoticed to our eyes. Although all the park's ecosystems and plant communities are of great interest and value, perhaps the Spanish junipers are the rarest and most singular. These communities are similar in appearance to thickets, above which stand out the larger sandarak trees, which are also called Sabina Mora. It belongs to the family of cypresses and junipers. Its scientific name, Tetraclinis articulata, refers to its slightly bluish articulated twigs and to its fruit, which are divided into four parts. This tree, which is mainly found in northern Africa, is present here in the form of the largest natural population to be found in the entire European continent. Although it does not form dense forests, it is accompanied by numerous species of shrubs, some of which are also of great interest, such as Arto, another Iberian African species, wild olive, which is the wild variety of the olive tree, and the Mediterranean dwarf palm, the only palm native to Europe. The Mediterranean dwarf palm is also one of the characteristic species of the dunce scrub formations covering the north-facing treeless slopes, which bear a variety of characteristic shrubs such as rock rose, mastic, gorse and esparto. In those areas exposed to the sun, we can see how the vegetation, subject to more severe conditions of insulation, differs markedly from that found in the shaded areas. These thickets are dominated by a singular shrub called cornical, silk vine, which owes its name to the peculiar shape of the sheath that bears its fruit, which resembles two small horns, cuerno meaning horn in Spanish. The silk vine is accompanied by many other species, such as lavender, gorse, thyme and rosemary, among others. Examples of the highly resistant nature of the vegetation that grows on these Mediterranean-facing hillsides. Among the park's most interesting plants are various endemic species present in these mountains. Such is the case of Jara de Cartagena, Cistus heterophyllus, of which there exists a very small population in a very localized distribution area, making it an extremely endangered species. Similarly, mention must also be made of Siempre Viva de Cartagena, Limonium cartaginense, exclusive to these mountains and characteristic of soils with a high content of heavy metals. Embedded in the steep slopes, ravines descend abruptly and lead us to the plains and closer to the sea. These channels, genuinely Mediterranean and characteristic of arid environments, nurture new species to the already long list of flora present in the park. Oleanders, cane, reeds and tamarisks are the most representative species to be found in the ravine's rocky beds. Once we reach the coast, the proximity to the sea determines the existence of a peculiar vegetation adapted to the extremely harsh environmental conditions. In fact, few species are able to colonize the rocky cliffs where we find typical species such as Margarita de Mar, Bayenis maritima, sea lettuce and sea fennel. The sands and dunes are also characterized by their extreme conditions, although here the vegetation is much more varied. 
During the spring, a predominantly yellow blanket covers these ecosystems where Quernethios de Mar, Lotus creticus, Siempre Viva, Pega Moscas, Ononis natrix, and many other species of showy flowers grow together. One of the most representative plants is the sea lily, with its beautiful white flowers, which colonizes the sandy areas closest to the beach. In the vicinity of the Razal salt works, the presence of moist soil transforms the composition of the plant community of these sandy areas and favors the appearance of other species, such as reeds. A walk through this wetland allows us to observe flora that has adapted to the high salt concentrations in the soil. A wide belt of reeds which have developed due to the highly moist soil exists around the salt works. There is also a large expanse of salt marsh with species such as shrubby sea blight, saltwort and the colorful status or sea lattice with its white or pink bloom. We cannot conclude our floristic tour of Calblanque without mentioning the contribution that humans have made to this protected area, with some plant species having been employed by local inhabitants throughout history. Such is the case of certain dry crops, such as cereals, olives, carobs and almonds, as well as fig trees and palms, all of which form part of Mediterranean culture and help shape the landscape of one of the natural spaces with the highest plant diversity in the region of Murcia. Fauna The fauna to be found in the Calblanque, Monte de las Cenizas and Peña del Aguila Regional Park is composed of a large group of species, many of which are highly unique and of extraordinary ecological interest. The variety and contrast of the habitats present in this natural area favor the existence of animal populations with very different ecological requirements. Pine forests and scrubland, rocky crags and cliffs, ravines and salt marshes, beaches and sandy areas, and areas dedicated to traditional crops form a mosaic of multiple options in which species can develop their life cycles. We begin our faunal tour in the forests, which occupy large extensions in the shadier areas of the mountains and host a large number of forest-dwelling species. Birds are the most representative species and they are easy to observe. In spring, they bring a noisy explosion of life to the forests. Long-tailed tits, robins, tree creepers, chickadees and goldfinches are small birds that live among the pines accompanied by other larger birds, such as blackbirds, woodpeckers, doves and pigeons. The non-wooded areas, covered by bushes of various kinds, are the favorite habitat of many other animal species. Some mammals, such as rabbits and foxes, and various species of reptiles, such as the large psamodromas and the oscillated lizard, are common in these open areas. In areas dedicated to traditional crops, it is common to find partridges and other birds, such as stone chats, crested larks, red stars and warblers, which nervously seek out small insects among the vegetation. One of the most representative is the black wheat ear, which typically breeds in rocky areas and small cliffs. It is easily distinguishable by virtue of its black plumage, which highlights a striking white tail. The ravines drain the scarce but intense rainfall that falls in these ranges. These sinuous channels, with their stony beds and vertical slopes, are the ideal habitat for bee-eaters to establish their colonies. These colorful summer birds build their nests in deep tunnels dug into the earthy slopes. Continuing our tour through other enclaves of faunal interest, we now approach the cliffs and crags to find one of the most emblematic species of Calblanque. This is the eagle, a fascinating bird that has found the perfect site in these inaccessible environments in which to nest and raise its young in peace. The Borelli's eagle is an endangered species in the region of Murcia and therefore it is essential to preserve the scarce natural landscapes which still exist. 
Much more abundant than eagles, kestrels also build their nests in the rocky cracks. With their typical hovering flight, they scrutinize their hunting grounds from the air in search of their favorite prey, including voles, small birds, grasshoppers, and lizards. Among the birds of prey that inhabit the cliffs and crags of Cal Blanque, we also find the peregrine falcon, which specializes in capturing its prey in the air thanks to its powerful swift flight. And the eagle owl, the largest nocturnal bird of prey on the Iberian Peninsula. Another nocturnal bird of prey in the park is the owl, a much more modest predator which likes to occupy old, abandoned houses. Our exploration of the Calblanque fauna also leads us to one of the most unique places in the park, the Razal salt works, which constitute a wetland of great importance. They are considered an environmental reserve zone within the regional park and form part of the Mar Menor Special Protection Area. They are host to endangered species, such as the Spanish tooth carp, a small fish listed as an endangered species that can live in different concentrations of salt. Throughout the entire year, we can find birds of great interest that are associated with this wetland. Mention may be made of the shell duck, a species of large duck with showy plumage and a beautiful red beak. And the Audouin's gull a species endemic to the Mediterranean, which uses the salt works as a resting place, especially during the winter. The salt lakes are also favorite spots for the reproduction of typical wetland birds, such as egrets and storks, which led to their inclusion in the Mar Menor Special Protection Area. The winter also sees the arrival of various species of sandpipers, plovers and other shore birds, who tirelessly roam the shores of the ponds in search of small crustaceans and mollusks. The salt marshes and reed beds surrounding the salt lakes also serve as shelter for a number of animal species. Characteristic of these habitats include birds, such as the zitting cysticola, and mammals, such as the Algerian hedgehog, an insectivorous animal that is especially busy at night. Finally, we must not forget the extraordinary diversity of the invertebrates that are distributed throughout the park's habitats. From the salt marshes, home to a tiny crustacean called Artemia salina, to the forests and thickets, which host a wide variety of spiders and insects. Special mention must be made, however, of the community of beetles that inhabit the beaches and dunes, where we can also find the characteristic Brethys crini caterpillar which is specialized in feeding on the leaves of sea lilies. The Calblanque, Monte de las Tanitas and Peña del Aguila Regional Park is ultimately an important location for wildlife. Many of the species that live there suffer some kind of threat, and as such, the park represents an essential space for the survival. It is essential, therefore, that everybody contributes to the preservation of this exceptional natural area, undoubtedly one of the most valuable to be found on our coastline.